Hello, welcome to today's video. I hope you're well. If you are new to cryptocurrency and you want to learn more, press the subscribe button, hit the bell button, and press all notifications. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin. Nine facts to kind of get you into the mood about Bitcoin. Why you should be looking at Bitcoin for a long term investment, but these are nine facts that you should know about Bitcoin before you even press the investment button because these are very much fundamental key to why it is such a success over time when it goes down it bounces right back up and it holds as a store of value so let's get into these nine cool little facts right then so me, I teach crypto. Bitcoin is a great investment in my honest opinion because I know about it, I understand it. Now, check out the link below. Premium, 99 pence, literally just over a dollar. And you can get 30 hours of content of me and Telegram groups and all kinds of other good stuff such as live Zooms, teaching from other people how to be successful in crypto. It's very, very easy to do. You just literally click the button and you press play and you learn all kinds of different stuff. Fundamental analysis, which I think is more important than technical analysis, but you can learn that too. But fundamentally, you need to understand what assets you are buying, research is key, and Bitcoin is the daddy. I'm gonna talk about it. So, fact number one. Since its inception in 2009, there has been several speculations about who the father of Bitcoin is. The Bitcoin white paper was made to be fully public under the Poseidon of Satoshi Nakamoto. The identity of Satoshi Nakamoto is still a complete and utter mystery. No one knows who he is. People who claim to be him have not got the minerals to prove it. So it still stands to reason today. You know, literally 10 years later, no one knows. Fact number two. Bitcoin is untraceable. Bitcoin is not untraceable. Haha. <laughs> How does this work? Now, Bitcoin is interesting, it's on a blockchain. If you don't know much about blockchains, I will do a video about blockchains at some point in the near future. But when you make a Bitcoin transaction, your name and identity is not used in any form. The only way it is used is if you go into a public exchange like Binance, like Bittrex, like Poloniex, whatever, where you must comply with KYC, know your customer regulations essentially, that is it. But when you have a Bitcoin address, it's on a permanent ledger. When this is kind of activated or when you actually have a look onto it, you can visibly see how much Bitcoin someone has in their wallet. So it's fully transparent. So this can make you see how much you hold and how many transactions you've had in that wallet. So it is a traceable asset where you can see exactly what someone's been spending, where people have sent their money to, but you cannot see who that person actually is. So there you go on that one. Number three. Now, if you lose your Bitcoin private key, you lose your Bitcoins. Now, again, I'm going to add on to this and do a, you know, a full video about wallets and what wallets I recommend. I've got two in there, but I have my private keys and my recovery phrase in a different area completely because I do not want to lose them. So James Howells, an IT guy, I think he's based in Wales. He lost his Bitcoin, 7,500 Bitcoins in November 2013, long time ago. And this was while he was cleaning his desk at home. He threw away a hard drive containing the private keys to his Bitcoins, which he had mined previously throughout the, the years of when you can mine Bitcoin for a very, very cheap rate on your computers in very, very small little hardware devices where it was very, very easy to do. Obviously, long-term potential ramifications of that were Bitcoin has now well, in terms of the numbers, went up a lot in price. We know that. So, you know, if you are putting your money, your Bitcoin, whatever coin onto an exchange, you've got to be right with knowing that once they have it, it's not yours anymore. OK, you own the rights to them. But if they lose them or if they get hacked, you know, you kind of got no legs to stand on. So please understand what wallets are what private keys are and understand that you must keep hold of them if you don't you lose access okay there will only ever be 21 million bitcoin in the world it is a perfect situation in my opinion 
absolute scarcity is what I like to describe it as. As there's only going to be 21 million, there's going to be obviously some loss. I've just mentioned before, some have been lost, unaccessible anymore. They're still in circulation, but they can't be sold or whatever. So they're going to just sit there in the, the sphere, wasting. So this absolute scarcity, what does it mean? It means price demand. If more people want a Bitcoin, they will pay more for it. There's only going to be 21 million. You cannot make any more. It's not like gold where or we need more gold. Okay, we'll just mine more gold. When that happens, it creates sprite, like any sort of price demand spikes. And what people try and argue with the likes of a physical asset like gold and a, a cryptocurrency is, well, you can't see it. You can't physically have it. But the demand to own and have ownership is still there. So there's only going to be 21 million and that will never, ever change. There will always be... Uh, an unlimited technically amount of gold it will eventually run out but we do not know physically as humans how much gold is around the world same with oil same with like natural gases we just don't know the, the data is roughly there but not a hundred percent accurate whereas with Bitcoin we know it's in the code so that is one of the biggest pluses ever if you're looking at an investment opportunity demand is it there how much supply is there and will it matter in the long term? I think Bitcoin ticks all of those boxes. Just like money, Bitcoin does not grow on trees. It is done in a totally different manner. But unlike traditional money or paper money, you cannot touch, feel or print Bitcoin, which is key. Bitcoin is mined on a blockchain network. These miners essentially will create blocks and each block is mined and verified, validated, and all transactions go through in that system. It is a very secure and a very costly way of doing it. But, you know, it presents a 300 times more powerful kind of network than the, the biggest supercomputers. It is a fully decentralized system, and I'm gonna come on to that in a bit more detail, but ultimately it is a very, very power extensive operation, which creates the prices, in my honest opinion, the more difficulty the mining is, the, the costly it is. Then miners need to make profit to make the system work. That is why prices go down and up all the time, but they maintain. I'm going to talk a bit more in a few little facts about the maintaining of the Bitcoin price. Since 2008, when Bitcoin officially kind of, you know, the white paper was released in 2008, the Genesis block was made in 2009. And since then, Bitcoin has made making constant profit except for one year. It took nine days in 2017 of December for Bitcoin to go from $11,000 to $20,000. The reason why it keeps making profit is because of the mining algorithm and the difficulty adjustment. This is where things get interesting and why you should understand why buying at the right times is key for buying Bitcoin. When the price goes up, so does the difficulty because it needs to be faster, it needs to be more secure, and that creates power. When it goes down, the difficulty gradually comes down. Every two weeks is a difficulty adjustment. It will come down and it will mean it's less costly to mine Bitcoin. The two week gap is a bit of an issue in some ways because if Bitcoin slams down in price and the difficulty adjustment is still really high, it means miners could be operating on a loss for a little period of time until it starts to settle down. However, the other way around, if it pumps up and the mining computers are still the same in terms of difficulty, they're making more profit. So it's it's cash 21, cash 22 essentially, or 21, whatever, whatever country you're in, whatever saying you say. But it is a very, very fundamental like kind of inflationary method where it will work over time if there's demand. But again, it adjusts, it is decentralized. It works in such a way. And that brings me on to the next fact. Bitcoin cannot be banned. It is decentralized. Due to the nature of Bitcoin, there is constant talk about banning it. Oh, it's this, oh, it's that, get rid of it. You can't ban it. This is basically hostility and it works against any jurisdiction, laws, traditional banking systems, etc. However, the fundamental design is such that it cannot be banned, only regulated. As long as you have an internet connection, and a Bitcoin wallet, you can engage in Bitcoin. However, little disclaimer, satellites are starting to get used, they're starting to get bounded around. You will start to see Bitcoin or 
cryptocurrency satellites where you can pretty much bypass the internet and still record and do transactions without having an internet connection that'll be happening it can, it's pretty much certain it's going to happen it's already been spoken about it'll probably happen so even then it's going to make it even harder for people to try and outlaw it which is pretty awesome a bit of a fun fact for you before we nearly finish the first bitcoin transaction was a pizza there we go may the 22nd is celebrated as bitcoin pizza day everyone has a pizza on that day pretty much i did this year as you do basically when people were mining bitcoins back in the day of the early days where we didn't really know what would happen with bitcoin how it would take off how it would be perceived and when you were mining you were mining a lot because the block rewards are huge and it was not much competition so you could make a lot of bitcoin they weren't worth a lot of money at the time and i'm going to kind of show you that in a second but initially they were mined and they were virtually worthless but on the 22nd of may 2010 someone purchased a papa john's pizza for 10,000 Bitcoin. This was the first official documented purchase of goods using Bitcoin. At the time, 10,000 Bitcoin was worth $41. Scary to think how much that is physically worth now, but there you go. The first ever transaction was a pizza. How awesome is that? Lastly, let's talk about the last one. Bitcoin is a store of value rather than a payment system. Due to its slow speed and its low block sizes and the transactions per second are pretty low, it kind of means that it's a bit of an unsettling area for you to go to a shop and buy. Yes, there's a Lightning Network, yes, there's SegWit and all that kind of good stuff, but they are not fully operational. If you were to send Bitcoin to someone, it will take time. It will take at least 10 minutes to get through the block area. And from there on, it will take a little bit longer to get the confirmations up, which is six required for most people. So there you go. That is nine interesting facts about Bitcoin. What you should know about it, you should already know about that if you are in cryptocurrency. If you are new to cryptocurrency and you do want to learn more, again, check out the links, get in the Telegram group and learn more about it. Bitcoin is a brilliant asset and you should always be putting your profits into Bitcoin. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I am an altcoin investor as well. I like to invest in alts because I do believe that altcoins are great for multiple gains and wealth. To create more Bitcoin, you buy low, sell high, you multiply your Bitcoin in Satoshi values. It's a really simple way to grow your Bitcoin. So there you go. If you want to learn more, check out the links, jump in premium, and I will see you in a bit. But obviously, don't forget to subscribe. Check out my other videos, and I hope you have enjoyed this video about Bitcoin.